Hey, and we're back. How are you all doing? I hope a productive week. Well, today, what are we going to do? We're going to look at cores. Oh, look at that there. And, and what I want to kind of show you is how we manage uh, cores requests. So cross, uh, cross origin <clears throat> requests. So why is that a problem? Well, let's, uh, let's kind of dig in and have a look. And I'm really bad. All right, let me backtrack. All right, so welcome. Now, what I've just done today is I've just run the website there. So I'm running the, the API server and I'm running the React.js website. So the React.js website is going to make some backend calls to the API. And it's doing that um, pretty, pretty straightforward. It's just, well, if we just look at the code there. So we got React.js. Uh, we are using this coffee list component. If I look at the coffee list component, it makes a call to our global API slash products, and then it renders the products. So the, the, the global API is located at localhost 9090. Now, if I go in my browser here and type localhost 1990 products, you can see that I can get my, my API information. It's, it's rendering fine. But if you look at the React.js website, you'll see that the React.js website is not showing any data. Now, that could be my bugs. In this instance, it actually isn't. So let's just inspect. And then let's look at the console. And what you can see here is that it says access to XHTML request at localhost 1990 products from origin 3000 has been blocked by cause policy. This is something you're going you're gonna to see all of the time. Very, very common setup. So why? Why is this blocked by cause? So let's, let's take a look. So the reason is that, that cause is, is specifically blocking that. So the way that cause works is that it will block requests to other origins from other than the one that's loaded. Now, what is an origin? Well, an origin is a fully qualified domain name. It's, it's a difference between the protocol HTTP and HTTPS and also something that's running on a different port. So my React.js website is running on 3000. So the origin is localhost 3000. And when we, we look, um, I apologize, this, this doesn't, um, doesn't zoom in particularly well, but when we, when we kind of look at the request there in the browser, you can see that request. And you can see that the referrer there is localhost 3000, which is the, the, the original orange. So the website, the, sorry, the API though, is running at localhost 1990. Now that's a different origin according to cause because it's got a different port. So the browser is blocking the request. Now, when you kind of just look at cause, you just think this is the most irritating thing in the world. Like, why would it possibly be doing this? But you've got to appreciate why it's doing it. So it's doing it to protect, protect us. So what causes is predominantly designed to do is to protect the, the, the browser from sending things like making requests to, well, let's, let's think of a scenario. You're logged into your, your banking system. So you log into your banking system, your banking system writes a cookie to your browser to make uh, API backend requests. But then you visit another page. Let's say you, you click on a, a link for a funny meme. And as it turns out, that is a malicious website. Now that malicious website makes a call 
to your banking API. Now, the way that the browser works is that the browser will see the request made to bigbank.com and it will say, oh, I've got some cookies for bigbank.com. I will send the cookies. So it forwards the cookies to Big Bank. Now, Big Bank will, will just, it's just going to get that and it's going to do whatever the browser says. So that clickjacking website, well, I could make, let's say, make a transfer from your, your bank account into my bank account because I need the money, right? And, and I've done that just because I've directed you to a website and I've made a call to your API and I've just taken advantage of the way that the browser works that it's going to send the cookies. So to, to avoid that situation, you get this cause mechanism in play. And what cause does is before the browser just forwards those cookies to, 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 your, uh, to your website, sorry, to, you, to the API, it does a check and it says, hey, what, um, what origins are allowed to, to speak to you as an API? And of course, Big Bank is responsible, so it'll say, well, only frontend.bigbank.com. So the domain that your clickjacking page, if that's been loaded from evil.com, then the cause request or the access control origin will be different. So the browser will just reject the request. So that's exactly what's happening here, right? So imagine that this coffee shop front-end website has, a, has authentication and login, and then I've got my back-end here. Now, imagine this is, this is a malicious coffee site, and it's, it's not running at uh, the, the correct location, but I've, I've set it up specifically to, to click-jack you. Now, if I, on my malicious site, make a, a call to the legitimate backend, then I'm going to forward those cookies, right? But because of this XHR and the cause, it's blocking it because, well, in this instance, product website is not returning any access control origin headers. Again, we see that in here. There's, there's just no, um, no headers. So how are we, we going to fix this? So what we can do is we can use um, the, the handler. Well, we've been using the, the Gorilla framework, so we'll continue to use the Gorilla framework. And we can use uh, the piece of middleware that uh, Gorilla has called Cause. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to configure a pre-flight request. So let's see that, that in operation. So what I need to do is let's scroll down here. And I'm going to add my, my cause header. Right, okay. So the, the, the cause header, I'm just gonna use Gorilla and that's in the, the handlers package for, for Gorilla. So Gorilla calls, and this is the, the, the signature here. So let's implement that. I'm going to just have to add the import because I've already got a package called handlers. I'm going to call it go handlers. So I add my import there and then I can create my, my cause handler. So go handlers dot cause and that's going to create me a handler called that ch. Right. Nice and easy. So what I can do is I can specify some of the, the options here. And one of the options is what are the, the allowed origins? So go handlers dot allowed origins. So this takes a string. So my allowed origins, well, I'm going to specify, it has to be fully qualified, including the protocol, HTTP slash localhost 3000, where my ReactJS website is running from. And I can add that as an origin. And 
then what I can do is I can just use that handler and I'm just going to wrap absolutely everything with this. So I can just go in my server where I've got my, my standard serve mux. Let me just wrap my standard serve mux with my course handler. And what am I missing? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I've been coding completely different language all day, haven't I? So let's try and do that with Go, shall we? Okay, so JavaScript, right. Okay, so we're now running our server again. So when we, we go back over now to our React website, you can see that we've now loaded our data. So again, let's look at the request in that XHR request. And you can see that again, I've made a call to products and I've made a get request. And the request has included the, the sort of the, the origin there. But the, the response this time, I'm getting this access control allow origin. This header has been automatically populated by the Gorilla cause handler. And what that's done is it means that the XHR request is, is allowed to, to continue, which, which is kind of um, straightforward, kind of nice. Now, it, it's, it's important for you to, to implement this. So why wouldn't you just use star, right? So I could just put star absolutely everywhere. And let me just show you, rather than having localhost in there, I could just use star, allow every origin. And th there are actually a number of cases when this is a valid request. So you would, you know, you'd, you'd want to use star if you had like maybe a public API that, um, that everybody can access. And again, that's, that's kind of still, still working there because I got that access control allowed star. Now, what this won't allow you to do though, is if you do have a valid requirement for the cookies. So for example, your backend API has some authentication requirements. You've got a cookie, a JWT, which is encoded into a secure cookie, and you need that cookie in order to authenticate the API request. When you, when you kind of want to do that, then what you've got to send through is you, you've kind of got to send through the, um, the access control allow credentials. And the browser, once it's kind of got that information, it will be looking at the, the, the domain. You know, it, you can't use a star in that. You have to be very explicit on the domains that you, you allow. I think that's kind of one thing, right? What I think, what I wanted to really show you in this video, and I, and I was pleased it's, it's turned out to be just a little bit of a shorter video is just how you can set this because this is a general real, real pain for a lot of folks when they're getting into different microservices development and they, they start to, to sort of just play around and they're trying to get a front end web service to talk to a back end web service. Nine times out of 10, you're running on different ports and you're, you're running into um, access control problems. And this is just a nice and easy way of, of bypassing that. I'm going to put in the links below uh, a link to this really nice blog post from um, Bartos. And he, he explains the kind of the whole process and, and why it's actually really important, um, which I think is really, really cool. The, the Mozilla web docs will give you the kind of the full technical lowdown. Um, if you're going to read one thing, I would read Bartos's Medium post, but ultimately the kind of the crux of the matter is when you've got a website, which is running on a different domain or a different port or a different protocol to a backend service, the backend service must set the correct headers in order for this React.js, it needs to be setting 
that access control allow origin header otherwise the data just won't load and you're gonna get that really really confusing it ain't working what's going on six months later you'll figure it out and that was it that was a real short video today i'm kind of hoping you enjoyed it i i find it quite a confusing concept so i i do apologize if you if you find this a little bit well, it's a bit of a pain in the backside but you know it's there and now you know how to handle it what we're going to do midweek is we're, we're nearly ready to wrap up restful apis i want to show you how to serve some files and uh, some nice little tricks around doing that so how we can use things like gzip compression and all from again the standard library and then next week we're going to be straight into grpc services so rest is done into grpc grpc i'm pretty excited about i'm going to teach you how to use basic sort of unary grpc but also how you can use things like grpc bi-directional streaming maybe let's create a cool little chat app or something like that but for now i thank you for watching and well see you next time that's all